we've reduced labor for sure. We have, uh, and it also allows us to be more economical with, with our chemical dosing. Um, you know, like a little bit of background here, you know, going back to that um, on the fly treatment system I mentioned earlier, you know, we're, we're looking at three, uh, you know, key parameters there. Uh, one would be ORP, um, again, uh, another would be chlorine residual. Um, and, and with that process, we're using chlorine as our oxidizer and disinfectant. Um, and then uh, ATP, total ATP, which is a, you know, a test used to measure for the, you know, gross amount of biological uh, or live biological matter in, in water. Um, so ATP is a very difficult test. Um, and it's also expensive. Uh, we don't want to run that all the time. And chlorine residual is also a, a pretty intensive test from a labor perspective. Um, and it, you know, it's not something that you can do with extreme frequency. ORP is a problematic <laughs> parameter, but it generally is good as a real-time indicator of the effectiveness of our chlorine dose. So, you know, generally as we, as we inject more chlorine, the ORP value will rise. Um, so we can use ORP as a real-time indicator of how effective our chlorine dosing um, rate at, or, you know, at that moment is, um, or it'll give us a good indicator if the chemistry has changed. Um, yeah. You know, the, the water that, that gets, you know, in that, in that scenario, the variability is not that high, but it can change because there are different sources of water getting blended. Um, so the demand for chlorine can drop or rise dramatically. So we can use ORP, you know, with, you know, multiple readings per minute as a, as a real-time indicator of how fast our, or, you know, how well we're doing with our dosing. Wow. Um, so long story short, it can keep our chlorine residual where we need it to be um, and allow us to, you know, prevent going for a long period of time with over or underdosing, but, you know, overdosing is probably the more likely scenario. 